Hello, welcome to this video. This is a continuation of the video that we did last time with installing a database so that we can connect that database to our WordPress application. So in this, this video, we're going to go ahead and download WordPress and connect the WordPress to our created database. Before we do that, let's go ahead and look at our database, make sure that we have all the credentials that we have to sign into this database um, from our server. Oh, and yes, just to let everybody know, this is not the only way to create a database. There are multiple ways of creating a database. You don't have to do it online. There's also different um, online applications like PHP My Admin or Web Admin. There are plenty of other applications that you can use to create a database. However, since I'm going through a, a, a server and I'm going through the command line, I just choose to do it this way. Um, number one, there are several reasons, and, and it's a personal reason. It's not something that everyone has to do if they have a server. But number one, I go ahead and do it from the command line. Now, why is that? Why is that unique? And why why is that um, a reason? Well, number one, once you start doing things through command line, eventually you can create a script, and then through that script, you can create multiple databases and users for those databases. And usually, all it is is even though it's through the command line, all you gotta do is just run that one script and then put in however many databases you want to to create and install. That's my main reason for going through the command line. There are others and I'm sure people in the comments will mention their reasons for using the GUI version which would be like I said PHP my admin or webmin. Do it however you want but for me I'm going to do it through the command line. Okay. So first, in, as I said in the last video, we went ahead and created a database. Let's go ahead and check out that database real quick. And then we're going to do it. And this is the command you want to use. And you want to do a MySQL space minus y, uh, U as in uniform. And then hyphen. I'm sorry, you want to do the hyphen in front of it and then P Diddy you can either space it or not I usually like to space it for myself for readability and then you use a minus P the P is for password and the U is for user and then you press enter on your keyboard it's gonna ask for the for the password and <clears throat> excuse me what I am going to do is I'm going to refer to my notes for the password and this is a secret password so I hope no I hope you don't tell anybody else about it and I just paste in the password you're not going to be able to see it press enter and now since we have successfully logged into our database it does show that it worked now to see if we which databases this user which is P Diddy has access to what we do is we can type in the command show data base as and then semicolon colon and then you press enter and right there that shows you this is the database we created earlier and that's the one that we're supposed to have access to only so we're good to go we're going to go ahead and exit out of that don't, never forget to put in the semicolon and then you just press enter now we're gonna clear the screen um, you can either type in clear and then, then press enter or on your keyboard you can just press the control button and the letter or the button L L as in light that also clears it okay so we have our database the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and download WordPress. Now, you can download WordPress manually. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bash script to go ahead and download WordPress for me so that it can do it automatically so this is going to be a bash script right so bash script is an interpreter that comes with most Linux distros uh, by default and with that you can create what are known as small programs or yeah mainly there's small there's small scripting programs that can be anywhere from a couple of lines to a couple of hundred lines but they just make life easier because they automate the process of doing whatever it is you want so for us what we're going to do is we're going to automate the process of installing wordpress so to do that use your favorite um, text editor for me it's going I'm going to use nano and let's go ahead and do this you're going to need sudo rights because you're installing software on this server so just type in this command sudo space nano which is my text editor and then just put in the name of the of whatever script you want to name it could be whatever you want uh, I'm gonna put in WP for WordPress and then I for install and then dot and then you just want to put in the 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 initials of the scripting language you wanna you wanna create if you was doing Python that would just be P Y if you were doing PHE PHP it would be PHP if you were doing Ruby I think it's R Y or it might be R B Y I forget that about Ruby but for us we're gonna use the extension uh, sh for for bash and then we're just gonna press enter on our keyboard it's gonna prompt us for a password and press enter and here we go so this is where we go ahead and put in our our script and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it from here and put it in there and then we'll go over it a little bit before we uh, run it we'll just copy it and then come over here to the text editor and then we're gonna paste it in now this is just a simple little script is not it's not um, that important at all it's just a si silly little script right it's a very simple script and then you just go ahead and modify it right this right here where it says site folder this is a variable and in that variable you need to put equals and then put in the value the value of the variable and this is going to be the name of our WordPress uh, application right which we are going to change from WordPress to the name of this doc, uh, of this folder this is going to be our website so I'm just going to put in here my web site wait a minute let's make it more readable for you so I'm going to put in what my underscore I don't know if bash will will, will uh, take underscores it probably does but just to be safe let's uh, use no space my web dot com okay and then oh let's go ahead and start from the top this is known as a shebang okay and then you got the forward slash men and the forward slash bash this tells your your um, this tells the Linux server that this is the this is the application that will be running the script which is a bash script and then these are notes right here that are ignored by the computer by the uh, operating system Linux and it just says it's just a note that says downloading WordPress and we're going to change it eventually to this to this folder 
and we'll do that after we created it. And then like I said, this is a variable and the variable is going to have the value. That value name is going to be mywebsite.com. And then we come down here. This is very simple. This is just a note that's going to be ignored by the by the system. It says download the latest version of WordPress. And this is the command that we're going to use. All right. Echo means that this command is going to show up on my on my uh, screen. Okay, and it's just going to say downloading the latest WordPress in five seconds. This is this means it's going to wait five seconds or sleep five seconds, and then this is the um, this is what is going to download the latest version of WordPress, and it's going to sleep another five seconds or hold for five seconds, and then it's going to go down to the next um, the next command. It says here that it's going to, because it's going to download WordPress into a compressed gzip file. And what it's saying here is it's going to uncom or it's going to uncompress it. And it's going to extract the file in five min in five seconds. It waits the five seconds. Then it go ahead and it uncompresses it. Then it sleeps for three seconds. And then it says, it gives me the message folder is being or the folder has a, is going to be extracted from the zip file and then it's going to wait another three seconds and then let's see here let's go down further okay it's going to wait the three seconds then it's going to remove, after it extracts that folder, it's going to go ahead and delete the extracted file. Then it's going to wait another three seconds. Then it's going to, oh, okay. I'm not even reading it right. But then it says, oh, no, it says now it's been removed. It's going to wait another three seconds. Now the file that it downloaded, that that or the folder that it downloaded is named WordPress and it's going to change it it's going to rename it from WordPress to whatever the variable is and as we know the value for the ver for site folder is mywebsite.com so that's how you express the variable right there which means it's going to change it from WordPress and rename it to mywebsite.com then it's going to wait an additional three seconds then it's going to go ahead and rename the folder and then let's see let's go down further then it's going to give us the message that it renamed the folder to our new folder name which is mywebsite.com and it's going to come down here it's got some more notes then it's going to say after you after doing that restart the web server wait for three seconds and then it's going to restart the web server wait another three seconds and then it's going to give us the message the web server has been restarted and it's going to wait another three seconds then it's going to say we're going to check on the web the web server status wait for three seconds then it's going to run this command to check on the status wait another two seconds and I was supposed to write a command to go ahead and quit after it after it did a, a check but it didn't work so I have to put this in manually and we'll do that in just a minute and then sleep one second and then it says finally this script is done alright and so that's it so that's our script. We're going to go ahead and save it. Then we're going to go ahead and make sure it's moved to the proper folder. And then we're going to run it. Or we're going to, yeah, give me a second here. So we're going to save it. And to save it, on the keyboard, you do a control S. And then to get out of the, the folder, uh, the file, you just do a control X as an X-ray. All right. Now let's go ahead and look at it. See, the folder has been created. Now, 
I only think the, the file has been created. There's two other things we need to do before we run it. The first thing is, is that we need to go ahead and move it over to the folder and the folder and destination that we need. So let's just go ahead and do that now. We can just go ahead and do a move space and then the, the file name and then we want to move it over to var dub 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 and then press enter. Ah, it says permissions denied. That means I have to use sudo command to uh, complete out this, this uh, command. So let's just hit the up arrow key on the keyboard. Come on over here again to the very far left and then type in sudo space and then that command then press enter okay if you get no no nothing after the prompt that means that you didn't have any errors and to check to make sure we can go ahead and look inside this folder that the current folder we're in with the ls command and there's nothing in there so now what we need to do is switch over to the var or slash www folder. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll do a CD space B A R dub 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 uh, press enter. Okay, and do a ls to list the uh, directory and see what's in there. And as we can see, our our file, our bash script is in there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do before we run it is we want to make it executable. And here's how we do that. We make it executable with the with the sudo command space, and then you want to do a change mod. This is just modifying it to switch it from a regular file to an executable file. And then you just do a space, and then you do let me see, you do a u plus x space WPI and that's how you go ahead and make it executable that's the command to use now the U means that only the user will have the rights to run this um, this file everybody else will just have read rights and that's it so we press enter and as you can see right here the file is white right that means it is not an executable but when we do another ls, which we're fixing to do in a second, and then we press enter, you're going to see it turns from white to, to green. Watch. Yes, see? That means that right now it is executable. All right? So other than that, we are ready to go. Right? So to run this command, what we're going to do is we're going to type in sudo space dot forward slash that means run this fi this file in the current directory and then we type in WPI space and then we type in SH right and then once I press enter this script is going to go ahead and start so I'm going to press enter and it's going to go ahead and start it watch and we get the first command downloading in five seconds okay so now it's downloading now we're moving on with the next command extracting the file in five seconds it's extracting the file okay extracted standby for the zip file removal that's the file that we downloaded originally zip file has been removed now they're renaming the WordPress folder to mywebsite.com. Folder has been renamed to mywebsite.com. Restarting the web server in three seconds. Oops, says it failed to restart it. That's okay, we'll do it manually. Okay. Let's see. All right, looks like it did not restart the web server. That's okay. We will go ahead and restart it manually. First, let's go ahead and look at the web server. So we do that by doing a sudo s y s t e m c t l space status. Oh, I know why. It's because this web server 
is a um, Nginx. And in the script, I forgot to modify it. That script is trying to restart Apache. Apache is not installed on this one, it's Nginx. So that was my fault. I should have modified my script. So let's just go ahead and manually restart the, the Nginx. Okay, it does show that it is up and running, but just to make sure, let's just go ahead and start restart it. I'm gonna clear the screen, then I'm hit the up arrow, then we're gonna modify this command from status to restart, and then press enter, and it's been restarted. Now, I believe with Nginx, you can also do a reload command, but I'm not sure. Let's see. You can. Now, here's the reason why this is a significance between a restart and reload. A restart would be like if you're doing a maintenance and there's really nobody else on that should be on your web server, okay? Either whether it's a client that's accessing one of your web pages or one of, whether it's somebody internally who's working on it. If you're doing a restart, you're doing that when the least amount of people are on it. If there are a lot of people on it and it's still in production, that's when you want to do a reload. Because if you do a restart, you might kick them out. If you do a reload, they should still be in there. They shouldn't even see any any issues with the service. but. Even if they do, it's going to be a small footprint. So that's something that you may want to keep in mind. But in either case, it has been successful. It, uh, WordPress has been installed, and then we renamed it to my website, mywebsite.com. So let's do a ls to list the contents in this, uh, in this folder. And as we can see, my website has been create it okay so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and delete this this script we don't need it anymore so let's go ahead and remove it oh let's see I hope that uh, removed it let's see here no it did not probably because probably because we need permissions, which means I have to use the sudo command. So, I just hit the up arrow a few times, and then I typed in sudo space rmwpi. Press enter. Looks like that did the trick. Okay, now, I hope, I hope everybody is uh, uh, able to follow along and see what we did. Um, the script that we used that's a script that I have saved um, on on my own on my own as one of my own personal files. Not to worry, I will make that available. I will I will make the link available for that. You can go ahead. And, you will be able to go ahead and download that and look at it and modify it however you want. But moving right along, what we can do now from here is we need to make some modifications to our our. Um, WordPress website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change into it. CD space and then my. You don't have to type out the whole thing. You can type in the first few letters, usually the first two or three. And then on your keyboard, you press tab and that should complete it out. There you go. And then you press enter. And now we are within that folder. Now let's clear the screen a little bit. Do a ls and you should see all the contents. All right, so as you can see, you have three folders in here: wp admin, wp content, and wp includes. That's good. And then you have a bunch of other files. Right now, the file that we are we are concerned with is going to be this one right here. All right. This is the one that's going to hold your credentials for your for your database, your database user, and the database username, or the database user password. So what we want to do is, before we modify this, what most people usually do is they make a copy of this and they rename it, and then 
the copied um, file is the one that we work with. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're going to go ahead and highlight that. Come over here. And you need sudo rights for this. So it's going to be sudo space cp. And then that file name space. And then we're going to rename it. Most people just name it to wp-config space or .php. And then we press enter. All right. Now let's do a list of that folder again of this directory. Okay. So as you can see, we made a copy from the sample file to this file. Okay. And this is the file we're going to configure. All right. So if we have problems, we can just create another copy of this. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to look into this this file right here and make some modifications. So we do that with our favorite text editor and for me it's nano space and then this file name. Right? And then we press enter. Excellent. Now, we're going to go ahead and scroll down because, like I say, there are a few modifications we're going to need to do. All right. Right now, we're interested in these three modifications that we need to make. We need to change the database name, the database user, and the database user password. Right? So, that's what we need to do. And this should be the name of the of the database and the database user that you used when you created it earlier. That's why for me, I'm going to refer back to my notes. Database name was user 1db. Right. Then we're going to come down here. Then we're going to put in the username. which is P. Diddy. And then finally, we'll put in the password. And this is the password. All right, so we're done with that. Okay, and then what I'd like to do, if I got more than one uh, modification I need to make on a file, I might start uh, saving it in between modifications. That way, if I lose some data, I don't lose it all. So, in order to save this file in, in the middle of uh, modifying it, on Nano, what you want to do is press the Control button and then the button S, as in Sam. And as you can see right down here, it says wrote 96 lines. That means it saved it. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to do some more modifications. Right? So we want to come down here. We want to come down here to where it says authentication, unique keys, and salts. What that means is, is that we want to encrypt the um, the username and pass or the password that we use when we log into our WordPress uh, site. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, and you'll see all this where it says define right here, right? You'll see all of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate a new a new um, what would you call it? A new encryption so that we can encrypt our, our WordPress password. Right? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of this right here. Get rid of all of it. And then once we do that, we're going to we're going to go to a website 
and we're going to get new encryption keys. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up, come back up to here, and you'll see this, this link right here. This is a website link. We're going to go ahead and right click and copy the link. We're going to open up a browser, and we're going to input that link. And then in just a few moments, a, a bunch of um, encrypted information is going to show up. There we go. This is the new encryption that you want to put into that folder that we're modifying. Or, I'm sorry, that file that we're modifying. Now, before you do that, it is recommended that you hit the refresh screen several times. Right? That's way, That way you make sure that you get a decent copy then what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste everything right click and copy it come back to your server go back to your file and then you're going to paste everything in there all right all right you're done all right at that point everything is good everything is done what you want to do is go ahead and save this folder save this file and then you can go ahead and exit out of it. Okay, now we're done with the modification. We're done with everything. We're done, we're done installing everything on the, LAMP ser on the LIMP server. The next thing that we're gonna do, and the next thing, well, I'm sorry. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go ahead and install the, Word, the WordPress website online through the browser, okay? We're going to do that in the next video because this video has went past 30, 30 minutes. Kind of long for me. I'm sure it's pretty long for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to end this video here. And then we're going to take up the rest of the uh, installation in a new fresh video. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys looking at my video. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. To go through and look at these video series thank you very much I hope you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for the uh, more videos and wherever you are you have a good day or night bye bye